13 Calgary. And Mitchell throws. Here's the first catch by Joe West this afternoon. And West gets maybe three on the play back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down for the Stampeders. How concerned should the Stamps be that essentially their starting offense minus Cornish with the first half injury has not done much here in this football game against a team that will not make the playoff. Well, it's absolutely a worry because it's not the way that, that you want to come out. Now, with Cornish in the lineup, they came out and they, they ran the ball right down the Blue Bombers' throats and at will, basically, to start. Maver has that kick block. And a chance now for the Bombers who recover the ball at the three-yard line. So another turnover by the Calgary Stampeders deep in their own end. Looks like Corey Watson got the hand off, and the Bombers are in business. Well, trouble on the back end of this punt unit for the Calgary Stampeders is they've got four guys across that back line, and they're responsible for taking what comes through. You'll see they're not outnumbered. Winnipeg Blue Bombers get one, two, three, four guys through for four blockers. Their issue comes when they take three guys to block two on the right side. Yannick Carter went right, but a stay on the left with Jeff Heck and should have had Corey Watson. 16th block kick of the year in the CFL. Only 10 all of last year. Here's Cotton on the first down carry. And Juwan Simpson gets a quick hand on him. And if anything, a loss of a yard for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who for the third time in this game, Dwayne, are set up deep in Calgary territory. Yeah, the block punt, much like the turnovers in that first half, very timely in terms of the field position, but it's a matter of capitalizing. Here you see terrific defensive play by Juwan Simpson just shooting that gap to run down the back, caught in the backfield. to the goal line it is caught for a touchdown Clarence Denmark has the first touchdown of the game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and now the point after can tie it the Blue Bombers finally take advantage and there's the guy who set it up Corey Watson his second blocked punt of the year sets the table for the bomber offense it's been a big part of the CFL story this season we mentioned 16 so far and a number of them have played deciding roles in football games. And Drew Willie gets it to Denmark, who has his first 1,000-yard receiving season this year, and now has his third touchdown catch of the season. Check that, Robert. It was Robert Marv. Pardon me, not Drew Willie. And now Hiralahu with the point after to tie it. And a low snap, and the whole this fires. And now it's punted into the end zone by the holder, who is Kyle Jones. Now if, he, if he managed to bounce this for the drop kick. The convert is no good. He did not, apparently. So, the Stampeders maintain the lead. Watson the block, Denmark the catch, and it's 10-9. Calgary. Was in the end zone or not? He has the touchdown catch, and his team with the missed convert is now within one. And Clarence Denmark, another one of those positives in a rough year for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, over a thousand yards receiving for him this season. with the football back on first down. Carry goes to Anthony Parker. And here you see where it began. Corey Watson right up the middle. Free run to make the block. He's happy over there on the sidelines. And then Marv with the result. touchdown catch to Denmark, who was telling teammates during the timeout, I had to make sure what the yellow stripe was. I wasn't sure. Yeah, they're, they're all becoming blurred quickly down there, despite having been shoveled off in the break. Now 
Bully by Mitchell looking over the top, and the pass is incomplete. That's the first time we've seen either quarterback try a deep throw that was incomplete for Mo Price. Yeah, the, the deep passing game has really not been, been a factor under these weather conditions. Mo Price starts as the number three receiver into that boundary. Well, that's the great equalizer, isn't it, Dwayne? When you think about, you know, the 89 Edmonton Eskimos who went 16 and two, it was a ferociously cold day at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton when they lost the West Final of Saskatchewan. Let's go, Mo, come on! Fumble recovered for a touchdown that game that was really the deciding fact that you gotta think that with conditions like this in three weeks' time, Ugly weather can change everything, whether it's just a, a really wet day that makes the ball slippery, makes it feel slushy, whatever it may be, or when it gets cold like this, and the, the combination of the footing, the, the effect on ball security, as we've seen a couple of times, the Stampeders, a team that has taken care of the ball all year, putting it on the ground a couple of times in the first half. Here's Walter now on the first down carry, and that Walter Buster is still going. Down to the 40-yard line. Finally brought down by Matt Buckner, a gain of 19. And you see the burst from Matt Walter. And while Matt Walter may not be John Cornish, he's a guy who actually may have more straightaway speed than Cornish when given the unit. The other test on a day like this is who's wearing sleeves and who isn't. <laughs> By the way, Mo Price from Orlando, Florida, is not. Now Mitchell wanted to go over the top, goes underneath instead, it skips off the hands of uh, the newcomer, Kamar Jordan, who had a catch earlier in the half. And you wonder if a part of this, tough to say whether it becomes a visibility thing with the snow, or just a feel for the ball as hands get cold tough to say but i mean regardless this is something kamar jordan if, he's, if you're going to play in the canadian football league late into the season these are things you've got to adjust to and be able to make that play <laughs> on second down mitchell has all kinds of time being chased down a comes down and there was no calgary receiver anywhere near that and it looks as though the call is going against Calgary. Calgary number 65. That penalty's declined. Third down. So again, the Stampeder drive stalls. And Peter Kyle. Another of those former dinos. Yeah. Native of Medicine Hat, Alberta. Always the challenge is the quarterback. You get a broken play and the quarterback is on the move tough for the offensive line to really know what their angles are in terms of blocking position. So rather than try a 47-yard field goal, Maver and the punting unit come on, and Maver was aiming for the sidelines but misses, and Paris Cotton will take a knee, and the Calgary Stampeders are now up by two. 11-9 the score, 7.26 to go in the third quarter. The CFL on TSN is back with this. Later, tackling hunger across Canada. Jack Winnipeg is second last in the league with 41 sacks. Calgary at 45, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who are dropping quarterbacks at will, lead the league with 61. You get a look at one of the best in the Canadian Football League, and Sean Lemon has got 10 on the year. Bomber started there on five yard line. Stays in, throws to Watson, who lost the football, and they'll rule that an incomplete pass. By the way, the virtual first down line is not working anymore. Another victim of the uh, elements, so we apologize for that. And the actual first down lines <laughs> are only slightly yeah, better. It's a bit of an issue itself. This is a, a heavy, wet snow today. factor is the black shoot up rubber that they use on field turf to get the turf soft is 
starting to mix it with the snow and make it miserable for the players. But this is a Procedure. much better option. Winnipeg number 61. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Than the old AstroTurf, which was hard as concrete in the summer and worse in the winter. Yeah, absolutely. A good surface to play on. I mean, anything, is, anything in these weather conditions is, is going to have its issues. There's what I'm talking about. Field turf has the blades of green fake grass. fake grass, and then mixed in is ground up rubber in the form of black pebble. Amar gets flushed out of the pocket, looking up the field. We'll try it there, and the pass is incomplete for Clarence Denmark, and back on the coverage with Josh Bell, the safety for the Stampeders along with Buddy Jackson, the corner. Well, and as Robert Marv continues here at quarterback, I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see Drew Willie into the third quarter. I mean, we knew that, that Robert Marv was going to get a chance to play. We anticipate that we may see Josh Portis as well as part of your evaluation process, decide who's going to be part of part of the mix next season and who's not. You want to see guys play in gradations. Parker takes the punt, the 35-yard line, spins away from one. And gets brought down at the 48. Ian Wild among those to make the tackle for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And so the Calgary offense will go back on the field. And we'll see more of 25-year-old Matt Walter, the Calgary native, who has replaced John Cornish at the tailback position for the Stampeders. Yeah, Matt Walter, a 2011 draft choice of these Calgary Stampeders. Returned to school for his final season after he was drafted to complete his degree. Joined the Stamps in 2012 as the primary backup to Cornish. And the hit goes to Walter, gets around the corner and gets cut down by DeMond Washington. Flag down. Holding Calgary number 85. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. So again, a penalty wipes out a significant play by the Stampeder. You're going to see more holding, though, Dwayne, when players are having trouble with their footing. Yeah, absolutely. West right in the middle of your screen. Number two receiver. to let go but it was a little bit too late to avoid being flagged particularly when you're right at the point of attack as John Cornish looks on so now it's first and 20 from the 39 the draw play to Walter and he's tripped up as reaching to get him was Mo Leg at the safety Eventually brings him down. Looked like this play had a shot, but somebody got a hand on Cornish, one of the defensive linemen. Got a piece of him right at the line of scrimmage. Got a gain of eight in the play. Here you'll see once he takes the handoff. There's a D tackle Harlan. That got a piece of him and slowed him down, allowing Leggett to close and make the play. <laughs> Second and 12, Mitchell throws to the sideline, knocked down by Washington as he stepped in front of Anthony Parker, and Calgary will again have to punt. Yeah, nice break to the football, particularly considering the field conditions from DeMond Washington. So one team has won 10 of its last 11, the other has lost eight straight, but this afternoon, the weather is the great equalizer. This is why, you, in all honesty, if you're a team like the Calgary Stampeders, knowing that you're going to be playing right back on this field a couple of weeks from now, and that this sort of weather could exist at that time, you, you want an opportunity to play in it before then. Keenan McDougall makes a terrific special team stop for the Calgary Stampeders, who still lead by two with 4.24 to go in the third quarter on the CFL on TSN.